Hello. This presentation will introduce you to the sound intensity application for the Brulink here 2270 sound level meter. We'll begin by having a quick look at what sound intensity is. Then we'll have a look at the equipment. And along the way, there will be a few demonstrations. In the center of this picture, you'll see a red dot. That's a sound source. It's a point source, which means that it radiates energy equally in all directions. Somewhere out in the field, you will get a sound pressure. Those are the pink squares. As the sound travels from the source to the receiver, it passes through the medium. That's a current of acoustic energy. Those are the blue arrows. That is sound intensity, and sound intensity has a magnitude and direction. Sound intensity can be measured. What is an intensity measurement? Well, it's just a description of the tools that you're using. The results that you get from a sound intensity measurement is far more interesting. Here are some examples of the results you can achieve. First is sound power determination, often under difficult circumstances. An example will follow soon. Then you can perform sound insulation measurements, whereby you will get the insulation of each individual component. And finally, source localization. There will be a demonstration of this later on. So sound intensity answers the question, where is the sound coming from? Here's a real world example. Suppliers of large power transformers promise low noise levels to their customers. This is because transformer noise often causes complaints. After the transformers are placed, if it turns out that the noise levels are too high, they are not removed or replaced. Instead, the customer will get a discount. So it's up to the manufacturers to prove that the sound levels of the transformers are sufficiently low. And it's valuable, therefore, to have a measurement method which will exclude all extraneous background noise. Sound intensity will do that, and often a reduction of one decibel could avoid having to pay very hefty fines, as you can see. If you find this interesting, please read the IEC standard mentioned on the sheet. How is it possible? Well, there's a theorem by Gauss which explains this, that all the sound energy inside the spherical surface is all measured and added together, but all sound originating from outside that surface will be excluded geometrically. The reason is that the sound waves enter the volume with a negative sign on one side and leave with a positive sign on the other, and these signs cancel if you measure accurately enough. There are some practical considerations to this technique. The situation should remain steady over time as you perform the measurement, and the geometry must be complete. Sound intensity can be used to detect noise sources and noise leaks. We'll show that later on in a demonstration. But the principle is easy to understand. Here you see a photograph of a sound intensity probe with two microphones. Look at the blue arrow. If the sound waves are coming from the front of the probe, then the front microphone will catch the sound first and the rear microphone slightly later. That difference is sufficient for the system to detect the direction. Conversely, sound coming from the rear, that's the red arrow, the rear microphone will catch the sound slightly earlier. And if the sound is exactly in front of the probe, that's the black arrow, then both microphones will get the sound at the same time, and you will in fact have detected that the probe is actually right over the source. So let's have a look at a demonstration measurement which was performed earlier. Sound intensity will tell you where the sound is coming from. In this demonstration, there are two loudspeakers, a left and a right. Each gives a different sound. The left loudspeaker gives a 500 hertz octave band pink noise, and the right loudspeaker gives a 4 kilohertz octave band pink noise. So when played together, they mingle, but they come from two different sources. 
If we place the probe to the right of both loudspeakers, then the sound coming from the two speakers both pass the probe in a positive direction, which is colored white on the display of the instrument. So on this picture you can see that both the 500 Hz band and the 4 kHz band are white, showing that the sound sources are both in front of the probe. Here we've moved the probe all the way to the other side of both loudspeakers. And you can see that the sound waves must now be passing the probe both in a negative direction, in other words, from behind. Negative is colored green on the display of the instrument. And once again, you can now see that the 4 kHz band and the 500 Hz band are both colored green. So they're both behind the probe. The next thing is, of course, to place the probe exactly between the two sources. So now the 500 Hz band is in front of the probe and it's colored white and the 4 kHz band is behind the probe and it's colored green. So this is a simple proof that a sound intensity measuring system with a probe set up in the way shown will enable you to see where the sound is coming from and in this case low frequency band from the front, high frequency band from the rear. Let's look at the equipment used for sound intensity measurements. When Brulinkia introduced the world's first digital sound intensity analyzer in the mid-80s, this is what it looked like. Very large, very heavy, needed a roomy vehicle to move it around in, and strong muscles to carry it. But it did the job, and it did important work back in the 80s. This is what the equipment looks like today. The 2270 can be fitted with the sound intensity application. It's lightweight, it's portable, it's easy to use, it has powerful processing features, the user interface is intuitive, and it works fast. Here's a picture of the complete system, including all the accessories you need for a practical, real-world sound intensity measurement. And the good news for users of the older 2260 platform is that all your accessories fit directly onto your 2270. Calibration has become a lot easier. In the past, the probe needed to be dismantled in order to fit it into the calibrator. Well, those days are over. With this new calibrator, it's possible to calibrate your probe all in one go without the requirement of dismantling it. How does the measurement actually work? Well, you take a photograph of the device under test using the 2270's onboard camera. You then create a grid on top of that photograph and subsequently project measurements results onto that photograph. And afterwards, if required, you can inspect the sound spectrum at each point on the measurement. Let's prepare ourselves for a practical measurement. Here you see a demonstration panel, which is called the leaky wall. It's a large 1 meter by 1 meter MDF board panel, and it has a known acoustic leak at the exact center. Nine measurement points have been identified, and there is a noise source behind. So the job now is to find the acoustic leak and actually prove it by measurements. The sound intensity probe is aimed at the measurement point in the way shown here. And now we'll move on to the actual practical demonstration. This is a practical demonstration of a real measurement. The intensity measurement is being performed on a large wooden demonstration panel with a known acoustic leak in the center. That's the little white square you see. I've previously used the onboard camera on the 2270 to take a photograph of the measurement surface. And then I've used the stylus to drag and drop a measurement square across the area. And I've asked the 2270 to divide the entire measurement surface into three columns and three rows. So that preparation has been done ahead of time. I will now switch on the measurement signal. What you will hear now in the background is the pink noise being generated through a loudspeaker at the rear of this 
demonstration wall. And I will start doing a few second measurements at each spot, starting in the lower left corner at point one. So please follow this measurement as we move through the different columns and rows. Here we go. I've done the first measurement and I press the store button afterwards and we see the results. The instrument automatically focuses on the next segment to measure. What you see happening is that I'm spending a few seconds at each measurement point, then stopping the measurement and pressing the store button. Next point starts now. There's only one row left to do now, the top row, starting top left. The measurement is now completed. I've measured in whole octave bands and I've previously found out that the 4 kHz band is the one where this acoustic leak is most apparent. So this picture that you see now is focused on the 4 kHz band. Now even if this measurement technique is new to you, it becomes immediately obvious where the acoustic problem lies on this panel you can see that the center of the screen has the highest measurement value at 63 decibels. So we have confirmed what we knew and that is that the acoustic leak is in the center of the panel. Now it's important to have this numerical data because if you then modify this wall to improve the insulation you'd like to have some numbers to compare before and after to see how well you did the job. That concludes this part of the demonstration. The sound intensity application in the 2270 offers a number of possibilities for post-processing the data. Measurement results can be transferred to your computer using the standard well-known utility program BZ5503 which is available free to all users of these instruments. This software will enable you to transfer the measurement results, archive it, and inspect it. If you wish to go beyond that, you could either use the B&K 7752 software for drawing contour plots. And in the lower right of the screen, you will see an example of a measurement on a washing machine. You can, however, also export the data to Microsoft Excel. This will enable you to draw simple contour plots. Here's how it goes. Transfer the data from your instrument into the computer using the utility software. Using that software, export it to Microsoft Excel and then use the chart wizard in Excel to create something called a surface chart. And here's what it looks like. On the flat surface at the bottom you'll see the rows and columns and vertically the decibel scale of sound intensity. 
And from this picture it's obvious what's happening. The center of the picture has the highest sound levels, as we already knew. So this is a very simple example of contour plotting, but of course the B&K software will give more professional results. So, to conclude this presentation, sound intensity is a very powerful, many-faceted tool, and under the right conditions it can solve near-impossible acoustic riddles. It's very easy to use, it's intuitive. It's possible to get started without reading a manual in many cases. It can be added to your existing 2270 platform, and you can get support and training to use it efficiently at your own site. Thanks very much for listening.